can you share your book? We, I mean, my children just love it. Yeah, I am. Um, what we've done is the publisher obviously has been working over the last six months to bring them out in a new format. to attend Environmental Storytime. My name's Claire Culliford and I'm an author. I've written a series of children's books to help you learn all about the different environmental issues that we're facing in the world today. In my stories, the animal characters help to come up with a fun, creative solution to these problems. So what they're doing is one came out this month and then they're coming out every month or two over the next number of months. Oh, so there's one um, book every month. So yeah, they're reformatting them all. So the new format looks a little like this, mm -hmm. obviously. Square yeah, shiny. I have this one at home. My children love it. Nice, big, big, big pictures, obviously. They recolored some pages to match with the specific content. They've changed some of the fonts. It's very bright, colorful, engaging for children. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously quite simple and robust for parents to keep at home, carry around and keep in school with them. And then mm. at the end, the all important bit, obviously, is the questions, which just prompt the start of a discussion about what the children have read in the story. It's very mm. much a fictional, fun story, but mm. all of the stories are based on scientific fact and are designed obviously to have children be inspired by the mm -hmm. subject, feel very positive about the fact that we can find solutions to these environmental issues that we're all facing. Mm -hmm. And even from a young age, start to develop the right creative problem solving skills to deal with these issues as they grow up to become teachers, scientists, or indeed anything else, because obviously no matter what line of work you're in, in the future, the environment and sustainability is going to feature. Hector is a hedgehog. Hedgehogs got their name because they often live in hedgerows and they have a snout like a pig's. What makes you come up with this idea at the beginning to write this? I've written my whole life and I am a writer and a translator and an educator by background, but I was working on some projects with teenagers um, and young adults um, related to charity that were to do with inspiring them to see the environment as quite fun and funky rather than something a little boring. It became clear that there was a lack of um, means to do the same with young children because obviously you can't necessarily run um, projects in the same way with them. They're at home with mum and dad. So I started to write two or three stories um, to introduce a single topic to children. And the response was just astounding, really. And obviously it made me think there's clearly a desire and a need for this. So I will write more. Families are very, very keen both to educate their children in terms of language. So they often want them to learn English but most definitely about these important topics as well. How could we use um, your books to teach the kids? I think it's very important that the children see the book as another storybook, ensuring that children are engaging with the story as they go through and the characters themselves. Getting to the end of the story, all of them have a set of questions. Those questions are simply to start off a discussion. In my experience, children mm. start to feed back and share their ideas what they've experienced with a certain topic. It's incredible that even one or two questions at the end can, can bring about half an hour or 45 minutes of conversation with children. There are also two sets of words for songs. We call these lyric. One has single words in it. Can you make up a tune to sing the song to? For example, Hedgehog, Hedgehog, Hedgehog Park, Hedgehog Park, Hedgehog Park, Hedgehog, Hedgehog, Hedgehog Park, Hedgehog Litter Park. And what about the song with complete sentences? 
perhaps you could try something like this. Litter in the park, litter in the park, we have to keep it clean. Litter in the park, litter in the park, let's put it in the bin. How can we read your books and and make students or, or the children keep their creativity. If I give you some examples, when I was working at um, a big bookstore doing an event last year, mm. with this book, for example, so just to give you one specific example, um, we read the story and then we did a few of the paper activities. And then because it's to do with, Hector helps clean up the park. So it's to do with cleaning yes, up the park. Mm -hmm. The children who were between three and seven, three and eight years old, they all made their own litter bin. They were wonderful. Some of them were orange, yellow and green of autumn. Some of them looked like spaceships. Um, and then they took that home with them, obviously, to explain to people at home what they'd been reading about in the story, mm. why it was important that we utilise bins. Um, and really with these stories, and it's wonderful as a creative, there's no boundary. You take the topic Mm. And you as an adult simply think, well, how can we play and do something fun mm. to reinforce whatever the child enjoyed in the story? All sorts of very fun things like that, really, mm. so that children are interacting with something through play almost. Thank you. I think other parents, we, I think we, we should learn each, I mean, we should learn more from, from the author as well. If you come up with more ideas that how we can read your books creatively, um, share with us later. Of course I will. And the other thing is to keep an eye on my website. I mm -hmm. also listen a lot to what people tell me because it's really interesting when people feedback ideas to me. I like to share those so that people know how to exploit the books. Mm -hmm. I'm very, although I'm a very, I'm an educationist, obviously. Um, I'm very big on when children have read a story, running with what you feel they most enjoyed about that story mm -hmm. and allowing them to create something. So if they're reading a story about a parrot and air pollution and you're happening to talk about electric cars, some children will say, well, I want to go to the toy box, the Lego box, and I want to make an electric car now. Mm. That's a brilliant way of continuing to talk about the topic in the story that you've read. Whilst I understand prescriptive education and we need to introduce them to activities, once you've done one or two that are slightly more traditional, I do believe children are very good at saying, well, this is what I remember from the story and this is the aspect I would like to focus on. And I really believe in letting them do that. That's all from Hector and me for now. If you enjoyed reading Hector Helps Clean Up the Park with us, try one of the other stories in the Little Helpers series. You can find them in bookshops like Waterstones and your local bookstore or on Amazon or on my website, www dot clairecolourford dot com. Take lots of care. Bye for now.